hand it off to Emma. All righty, thanks so much, Dylan. Um, as Dylan said, this is being recorded, so feel free to go to um, michaels.com to their community classroom page in a few days, and this video will be listed on their website for you to watch at your own leisure. And of course, um, Dylan will be moderating the live stream, so if you have any questions throughout the live stream, please make sure to comment them and he can relay them to me or answer them himself. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, as you can see, we are going to be making these really cute little desk organizers. We have three different styles here. Um, I'm just gonna kind of touch on how to create all, I hope you guys can see that. I'm gonna touch on how to create all of them and all of the little tips and tricks that you'll need to know throughout the process of making each one. And if you want any clarification on anything, um, I love, um, hearing all of your comments, all your questions. So please make sure to um, list them in the comment section. Yeah, we've got so people tuning we're... in from Texas, Delaware, Colorado, Las Vegas. Cool. cool. Well, welcome, everybody. I'm so glad that we have such a um, diverse group of people from all over the U.S. at least. Okay, so we have these really cute um, glass fixtures, and they're made by Ashland. They're available at Michael's. Um, we have two of them right here. This one is Ashland as well. So you're going to need some uh, glass jars, glass holders. You're also going to need a um, Mod Podge Ultra. That's the key of this craft today. So you want to make sure you have a bottle of Mod Podge Ultra. So it's, it's available in eight ounces and six ounces. Um, so really there's a lot of different sizes you can get and it's also available in a gloss formula and a matte formula. For this project in particular, it doesn't really matter if you use the gloss or the matte formula. I'm just using gloss today. And then we're also going to need our Folk Art uh, multi-surface paint. Um, and then if you have some uh, Folk Art just regular acrylic, that's okay. But you're going to want the um, multi-surface for what we're going to be painting on, directly onto our glass. As you can see, we're gonna be painting over our yarn as well. And that's where our Folk Art acrylic is gonna come in, but you can also use your Folk Art multi-surface for the on yarn painting, but you're gonna want the multi-surface for sure to paint on glass. Alrighty, also uh, Michaels has this really great um, sponger tool made by Folk Art. It's my favorite tool to apply paint to glass. So I always have one of these in my craft studio at home. So without further ado, I think we're ready to get started. Let me grab a little plate to put my paint on. And we're going to start um, applying our paint to our jar. <clears throat> and the first time I ever painted anything onto a glass surface, I was like, this is going to be easy. It's going to be just like using a regular paintbrush, but if you've ever painted on glass before, you know that there are, um, that it comes with its own unique challenges. So I hope to give you some tips and tricks today to kind of um, alleviate some of those challenges for you. So I'm just bouncing, as you can see, some of my paint on here, and there's a big block. So I'm just gonna use the rim of my plate and I'm just going to offload a little bit. Okay. And so as you can see, we're going to kind of do this guy right here. And I um, go, I went ahead and I painted the um, stem. So we're going to go ahead and paint that stem. And right now, this color is available at Michael's. It's Folk Art Multi-Surface Yellow Ochre. It's one of my favorite colors. It's really pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to go on a spouncing motion um, directly to my stem here. Yeah, so we like to use the spongers because they actually give a really even texture on your glass. You can use a brush, um, but it, it, it'll take a few more coats and it's a little bit more streaky. So that's why we like using the sponge. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, like I was saying before, there are a lot of problems that can arise when you paint on glass with just a regular brush. You can get a lot of um, visible brush strokes. You'll have to um, go over it a bunch of times when you try to give it a second coat. Sometimes your first coat comes off, but using a sponger tool is uh, definitely my favorite way to apply your paint to your jar. You just get a really even coat and it's super, super easy to use. So I'm gonna show you guys just right in this area just because it's easier to see. 
but a lot of times when you sponge and use spounce. So um, the great thing about this spouncer is that it is so dense that you don't get any air bubbles. I don't know if you see. Can you see that okay, Dylan? Yeah, super even coverage. Yeah, you know, a Emma, lot of we're time. getting a question about prepping your glass. So what okay. do we need to do to uh, clean your glass ahead of time? Okay, so that's a great question. All you need to do, we already went ahead and did it, but I should have mentioned that, that's a great question. We just used um, isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and we just gave it a quick wipe down. That's what I like to do with any of my glass or ceramic surfaces before, um, before I paint on them. So if you do come into an area where you have any big bubbles, I'm spouncing pretty hard right here. But if um, you were to get any big bubbles, you would just kind of tap it with a little bit less pressure just to pop those bubbles. Like I'm really not even applying any pressure. I'm just letting the spouncer fall onto my um, surface. Okay, so now for the fun part. I'm going to show you guys how we wrap our yarn around our jar. So Michaels has a really awesome variety of yarn available. So you can really choose any yarn that you prefer. We're going to use this um, color here that kind of matches our ochre paint. They have a lot of great um, yarn colors that would match your favorite folk art color. So it's super easy to mix and match with your existing home decor or, um, you know, whatever you're feeling that day, really. So I'm going to unspool a good bit of yarn because I'm going to be wrapping it up several times around my jar. So I'm going to go ahead and unspool a little bit of it. And so when I did this craft originally, because um, you know we weren't on a time crunch, I had more than an hour to do it. I just used my Mod Podge Ultra to start the initial adherence onto my jar. But just for today, since we're um, you know we're paying attention to our time, I'm just going to use a little tiny dab of hot glue just to get my yarn started. Trying to find the end. But that is totally not necessary. The Mod Podge Ultra will do that for you. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to lay a line of our yarn. And right here, guys, this is just wax paper. It's just to keep my surface clean because I'm going to be spraying directly onto my yarn. So I'm going to make sure that I get my yarn. Let's see there. And yeah, the great thing about this product is that it is a spray formula. So if you've yeah. used Mod Podge in the past, um, you may know that uh, it is very versatile, but something that we had been asked for a long time is if we could produce a uh, spray formula because it makes projects like this so much easier. Um, so that's why this is fantastic for this job. It ends up stiffening the yarn, adhering it. It's kind of an all-in-one um, and we use it um, with that spray nozzle, we use it just as the liquid um, with a brush. It's really, really versatile. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So real quick, I just, I forgot a step. So we're, sorry, everybody. So we're going to go back to our stem and we're just going to finish painting the stem with our sponger tool. Do we have any more questions, Dylan? Yeah. So um, we had one question about taping off um, before you paint your design. So yeah, you could absolutely tape off if you are painting just a part of your canister or your glass jar. Um, we love using our folk art painters tape. There's a new gray one that was just released that you can find at Michael's. I think it's about three quarters inches. Um, so yeah, you could absolutely tape this off. 
Totally. And then another, I'm glad you mentioned that because sometimes when I paint, uh, when I tape off um, a section of a piece of glass or a piece of ceramic, when I'm removing my tape after my paint has dried, or even if it is still a little tacky or a little bit wet, sometimes the paint wants to come off with it, even though it's multi-surface. Just because the paint has been painted on top of the paint, it wants to stay on top of the paint because it is so um, uh, durable. So a good tip is that you would want to get an exacto knife and score right where the tape meets your uh, painted surface. And that way you've cut along the paint. And so um, the part that wants to stick to the tape is um, no longer connected to the part that is painted on your surface where you want it to stay. So you just want to go ahead and score it with an exacto knife and then it'll come off really clean and you'll still achieve that really clean line that you placed with the tape. Yeah, that really helps. We've had a lot of issues, you know, you'll be in the middle of a project and then you'll just rip that tape off, not thinking. Um, so that is a great tip to have um, in your tool belt. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I haven't remem remembered to score um, a certain project and then yeah. kind of have to go back and touch up. Okay. And before we start the Mod Podge Ultra portion, you guys, I want to show you a little bit of how I um, painted onto the yarn. So the yarn is really, we got some fuzz from the yarn, but the yarn is really hard now because um, it has that Mod Podge Ultra on it. And one of the great things about Mod Podge Ultra is that um, obviously it's non-toxic, but it's also um, super durable, meaning that you can put it outside and um, you know it'll withstand um, the outdoor weather. So if you wanted to make something like this for um, your outdoor decor, you could definitely do that using Mod Podge Ultra. Yeah, we like to use it with napkins. We've done some planners recently and a few projects coming up um, in February and March are going to feature it um, again. So. Yes. Oops, I think we just, <laughs> we had a blackout for a second. <laughs> okay, so like I said, um, you can either use regular folk art acrylic or folk art multi-surface. Like if you wanted to place this finished project outside, you'd probably want to use um, multi-surface or you could just use your regular acrylic and then give it one more good spray with your Mod Podge Ultra because it is um, uh, weather resistant. So right here, it's one of my favorite colors. It's just our Folk Art Aqua, really pretty. And um, see these little lines? I really like the way this looks. It's kind of just like little, a really simple minimalistic pattern. We're gonna continue that to the back. And I'm gonna show you how I uh, did it to begin with. So right here, um, I would say, what? This is probably like a three quarter inch flat brush. And yeah, any I'm, little small flat brush will do for these. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm just um, going and I'm, so I started there and see how this line is really clean where I started with the tip of it. Now I'm gonna flip it around just because it's comfortable for, I'm right-handed, so that's what's most comfortable for me. And I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna connect it, making a really um, clean rectangle. See? And this took me um, so, it was so quick to do. Okay. And I just, so yeah, I just really continued all around and I got this really cute little pattern. Okay. So for this guy, um, to make these cute little polka dots, I just use the back of my brush. So that's one of my favorite tips to give people for, um, you know, maybe you're a new painter or you're just not super confident about your painting skills yet. If you ever want to make a perfect little circle, use the back of your brush. So now that we're painting directly on glass, we are going to use our multi-surface and it's the same color. I just wanted to show you guys that um, a lot of the options that you'll find in the regular acrylic section will also be available in multi-surface. Yeah, there's a lot of overlap. So if you have a favorite color in the normal formulas, you'll probably find it in our uh, multi-surface. Absolutely. And it, and it brushes on just as smoothly. Um, you really can treat it like normal paint, but it just is a, a lot more durable. So I'm using the back of my brush and I'll show you here. 
and I just poke and I do a little swirl. And I get and a perfect, a perfect dot. Yeah. Every time. This would be really cute for like maybe a little like beach house, put some seashells in it too. Maybe just wrap yarn around the bottom half and leave the top half um, just unpainted glass and put a little fun decal at the rim like this. Adorable. So that's how we did this guy. And of course, our folk art paint is non-toxic, super easy cleanup. So when you're done, you can just wash off the um, handle of your brush with water. All right, now back to the fun part, the Mod Podge Ultra. So we're going to lay out our yarn like this and we're gonna spray. And so a lot of questions we get sometimes um, about Mod Podge Ultra, people wanna know if this is an aerosol formula. It is not, I'm pretty sure Dylan mentioned this, but it's just, um, it comes with a little squeeze nozzle. I can show you guys that. So it's not like your traditional aerosol, like, cause I, you know, we have some aerosol Mod Podge formulas. Um, you don't need to be in a well ventilated room to use this. You don't have to be outside. You can do this in your craft room um, and it is just a liquidized Mod Podge formula. It is amazing. It's a total game changer if you haven't used it before. So you guys, we really want this yarn to be like very, very damp. So I'm just gonna spray it really well. Yeah, if you've ever used Mod Podge Stiffy, you're creating a very similar effect and you also get the outdoor benefit using Ultra. So um, you wanna saturate your yarn as much as possible. And then that'll make it super easy to um, stay outside or obviously these are desk organizers. So if you keep them inside, they'll be totally fine. Yeah. Okay, and so now that it's wrapped on there, we're just going to keep spraying and wrapping, spraying and wrapping, spraying and wrapping. And we don't really need to worry about uh, spraying our jar. We just wanna make sure that we spray the yarn. And so um, a tip, because the Mod Podge Ultra does dry fairly quickly, you want to make sure that it is in the position that you want. So you just wanna make sure that your two lines that we created here with our yarn are really flush together because um, we really just want it to stay in that um, straight cohesive look and you can give it a little tug it's not going anywhere to you guys like it is on there we go on to give it a little tug to make it more taut okay and we're going to keep spraying guys let me and dylan know if you've ever used mod Podge ultra before and uh, what project you made with it I feel like, you know, Mod Podge Ultra has been around for a few years now, but I feel like there's some people who still have never heard about it and they're always um, really excited to hear that Mod Podge comes in a spray formula. Yeah, our friend Cricket um, is chatting again and she said that there are some mason jars um, on their desk that they're going to be trying this out on. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Well, Cricket, like Dylan said, we would love to see the finished results. So if you decide to post your finished Mason jar creations on social media, make sure you hashtag five crafts so that we can yeah. tune in. Spray, spray, spray. It's kind of relaxing to you guys. There's just something cathartic about um, seeing or it's not, not seeing, but just like doing kind of a craft that is a little bit more um, time consuming. You have to be a little yeah. bit more patient. Yes. And you can kind of just zone out. It's kind of almost like knitting or crocheting. It almost becomes muscle memory, spray, 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 wrap, wrap, wrap. Yeah. And like, as you can see here, I'm just pulling my yarn down just so it, um, stays together. See, it's already starting to look like this. And as you can see, you guys, look, no, none of them on, like I'm shaking it, it's on there. It's not dry. So it's really just the water tension that's keeping it on there. But like with, uh, you know, traditional Mod Podge, it's made for paper and uh, napkins. Um, obviously there's certain formulas for different things, but 
this is by far the best Mod Podge formula for, um, you know, objects that are a little heavier, like yarn. Yeah, and we had a few suggestions, you know, we had brought up the mason jars, you could do this um, with, uh, somebody said the three wick jar from Bath and Body Works. Um, Gots, yes. When you're done with those candles, if you stocked up uh, during that candle sale earlier in December. Yes. Um, any kind of, you know, containers you have around, you can do this too. Yes, I know. I mean, I always get candles for Christmas. I know a lot of you, that's a really great gift to give someone for a December holiday. If you're not sure what to give them is just give them a candle because everyone loves candles. So yeah. I know we all have candles lying around. So once you're done, you need to buy some Mod Podge Ultra. And then we also had another question. Could you use um, Mod Podge for paper mache? Um, the Mod Podge Ultra? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you, you definitely could for a paper mache, uh, just, you know, if you don't know a paper mache, you get pieces of paper and then you attach it to something um, and, and cover it. And then it becomes like a hard, um, what's the word I'm looking like for? Shell almost, right? No, yeah. yeah, exactly. People do it with balloons, paper mache. You could definitely, that's a that's actually kind of a good idea. You could definitely do this with Mod Podge Ultra. That would be great because, you know, usually with paper mache, you have to mix a thicker glue um, with a little bit of water to thin it out. And Mod Podge Ultra is already pretty thin, so you could, just go right at it with my Podge Ultra. It's very thin. I mean, you guys can see the little puddle that I've um, acquired here on yeah. my wax paper. It's it's pretty, it's very thin, you guys. So also, um, now that I pointed that puddle out, just so you can make sure that you use all of that wonderful Mod Podge Ultra, um, it's non-toxic. So you can just um, tap your, like your, your the yarn into the Mod Podge Ultra just to soak up all that more. So you don't have to, um, you know, continue spraying if you already have a puddle like that. Yeah. We don't like to waste craft supplies, you guys. So make sure you take full advantage of all the stuff that you can when you're crafting. And if you don't follow us on TikTok, I highly recommend you finding um, plaid crafts on TikTok. Emma has actually done a similar uh, craft using an old Talenti ice cream jar. So the, yeah. really, the possibilities are kind of endless on this yeah. one. Yes. It was a delicious craft. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm just continuing to wrap you guys. Um, and like I said, I love going to Michael's for yarn because they have such a huge selection. I mean, we got all of these yarns at Michael's. They have the best colors. I don't know if you guys have heard, but um, Pantone released their color of the year announcement. And they actually, it's kind of unique. They released, they announced two different colors. They were ultimate gray and illuminating, which is a really vibrant yellow, like lemon yellow color. Um, I don't know if you guys knew that Pantone released a color of the year, um, but they do every single year. Last year for 2020, it was like a really, it was kind of like this, blue color. It was um, classic blue. Yeah, classic blue. Thank you. I was going to say true blue, but yes, classic blue. Um, and they and obviously they have some really awesome designers and, um, you know, trend forecasters over there at Pantone um, predicting what they think will be a hot color for the upcoming year. And so um, their uh, forecasters announced that um, that really lemon yellow color, which they named illuminating and ultimate gray, which is like a really kind of like steel gray color. So it's kind of appropriate that I'm using this yellow. This isn't exactly the yellow, but I feel like we're close enough. You're on trend. Yeah, to be on, to call myself trendy. I do say so myself. Cricket had a good suggestion. Um, they said to pour the Mod Podge Ultra into a little bowl and then saturate all of your yarn in it. So yeah, if you had like a little skein of yarn mm -hmm. that you didn't mind um, wasting a little bit of it, depending, or if you'd cut the exact length that you needed, um, that would be a great idea. Then you could just use exactly how much you needed. Yeah, you can absolutely do that. We put our Mod Podge Ultra in a spray bottle just for convenience, but you absolutely don't have to use it in the spray bottle. You can pour it into a bowl. It's, you know, it's on, it's absolutely up to you. So that is a great idea, Cricket. We're just, uh, we're using it in the spray form today, um, just to show you 
I would do it this way, but that's a fantastic idea. Yeah. We also had another uh, suggestion. Geez, Emma, you're on trend. Uh, saying that we should use the We by Yo Play little yogurt containers. So Emma has also been crafting with those lately. You'll see a project come up on uh, platonline.com soon that uses uh, the We containers by Yo Play. If you haven't seen them, they're really, really cute and really uniquely shaped little glass containers for yogurt. Um, you know, I'm telling, I just told you guys that I don't like to waste and I like to reuse. Um, that's what I tell people. But my secret is that I really just love to eat. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> both are both are true, honestly, though. So. Those little wee, if you guys haven't seen them in your like grocery store, they're super cute. They come in, um, it's just yogurt and it comes in a, um, little glass jar and it's a really cute little shape and they are um, very customizable so you can definitely craft with them. So next time you guys go to the grocery store I know you're going to have more um, on your mind than just your grocery list. Maybe you'll be thinking about what you can mod podge. Yeah um, and just to remind everybody this video will be available on Michael's community classroom. Um, usually they get them out up in within a day or two after the actual class. So you can look for it there um, and that will be around for you to rewatch if you missed any of the tips. Yeah. Okay. So for this one, I'm going to, I'm trying to make it like this one. So I don't want to go all the way up. I like to see a little bit of the, I call it raw glass. I don't know if you'd call it that. Just the unfinished glass. Yeah. So I'm just going to snip it off. Um, I don't think I have enough Mod Podge Ultra there, so I'm just going to spray. And there we go. Isn't that super cute? Perfect. So if we wanted um, a moss matrina thought. So in order for this to dry, you just have to set it alone. You don't have to do anything else. You don't even have to lay it down. You can just set it upright like this. It's going to maintain its shape. You just leave it to dry overnight and it'll be really hard, you guys. I mean, like, look at this one. Can you hear that? <laughs> yeah, once it ha it's had time to dry, it dries almost like a hard coat on there. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, my goodness. There's some Mod Podge Ultra on that. Just so the rest of my yarn doesn't get Mod Podge Ultra on it. I'm going to snip that out. And I'm just going to discard this wax paper. Okay. All right. Will is grabbing me some paper towels right now. And um, just a good reminder, you guys, it does come with this handy dandy little cap. Will. So um, just like any other spray bottle, when you're not using it, make sure to put the cap on it because you don't want the um, stuff that's in the nozzle to dry. That is the biggest thing about Mod Podge Ultra. We've learned uh, that lesson the hard way. Make sure that you close that up. Otherwise your sprayer uh, may kind of solidify there and you won't be able to use it to spray anymore. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so I think the last thing I'm gonna show you guys, um, one of the best things about painting on yarn is that each little strand of yarn kind of acts as a straight edge for you to um, base your designs off of. So with that in mind. Yeah, you don't even have to tape it off. That's awesome. Yeah, I was, because seriously, Dylan, when I was, when I was planning this project, I was like kind of worried that when I put my tape on here, when I pulled it off, that it would fray. Um, but um, then I thought, you know, I already have this straight edge with all of the different lines of yarn. So I can just, um, let me know if you guys need clarification on that. Um, I wanna just make sure that I'm making sense. Sometimes it makes sense for myself, but not to, not to other people. So, it, you know, obviously from where I wrapped it around, there's different strands of yarn. And so I can see those and know um, where my straight lines are. Um, so then when I wanted to achieve a clean line, like you can see here, um, I just, need to look out for those individual strands. Any other questions, Dylan? Yeah, Catherine was talking about cleanup um, for Mod Podge Ultra. So how do we usually clean up 
um, once we've done a project and gotten our surface a little wet? Yeah, so you can just use some um, warm soap and water, you know, some um, like uh, not the disinfectant kind, but just the regular uh, cleaning supplies that you can get at your grocery store. Just spray a little bit of that and wipe it off. It, you know, it comes off really easily. Um, to clean up these jars, we, you know, we don't recommend that you um, introduce food with them, you know, any of our paint or Mod Podge. Um, these are really just for decorative organizers, but if you wanted to clean it, you could, because it is, uh, you know, weather resistant, you could totally just get um, a warm cloth with water on it and just wipe um, the outside. Because you, if you wanted to put like flowers in here or anything like that, um, that would be how you would clean the inside of the jar. I hope that helps. Yeah, and after your project, you like since Emma only wrapped it halfway up, you could easily just take a kind of wet soapy rag and then just clean the rest of the residue off, and then you'd have your nice clean yarn yeah. wrap, and then you'd have your um, perfectly clear. Absolutely. Bottles. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm glad you pointed that out, Dylan. Like Dylan was saying, you can see here, it's a little cloudy just from the Mod Podge Ultra. Now I'm just, when I'm done, I'm going to go back with a warm uh, rag, warm wet rag, and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to wipe it off. It's going to, it's going to come off while it's still wet. So I'm not too worried about that. All right. So let's go in here and paint this little edge. So I found my line, you guys. And I just want to be mindful of that line as I go and paint on top here. Yeah, this, if you haven't had to paint uh, in a straight line very often, this can be a good um, mode of practice. Yeah, and like we said, I'm just looking at the one strand. I'm keeping my eye on it and I'm not going above that strand and I'm trying not to go below onto my navy line there. Darker. And if you do, nobody's perfect. It is totally okay. Um, you could touch up the navy part with your um, paint that you painted it with, with your Folk Art Navy Blue, which is also available at Michael's. And you can, uh, if you do get it above here, just quickly use your finger, use a paper towel and just kind of brush downwards because you don't want it to brush up that way and smear. And then use a, you know, a clean paper towel and just kind of try to brush down. And um, most of it should come off. And you just go all the way around. Let me know if you guys um, heard about Pantone's color palette for 2021, if you were surprised about it, if you were excited about it. Um, yeah, I think the last time they did a pair was about two, 2015, I think. Um, so I think everybody was kind of caught off guard that it was two colors. Um, yeah. I honestly was, I had my bets that it was going to be some form of green, like a emerald green or a hunter green, just because, you know, I feel like with everyone kind of hunkering down recently, um, we've been trying our best to bring some of the outdoors inside. And I've seen like a lot of home decor and art focused around um, like nature and a lot of beautiful green hues. So I was kind of surprised that it wasn't green. But the yellow and the gray, they make sense. Yeah, if you don't follow them on social media, um, it's actually pretty interesting. They, uh, it started to kind of clearly make sense to us why they picked the, the really light yellow and the kind of, um, darker gray because it kind of emulates a shadow. So if you had a yellow object outside in the sunlight, you have that yellow object and then you have that kind of charcoal gray shadow. So it's a really cool play. Yeah. So as you guys can see, that little technique I just showed you, you can get a really clean line on your wrapped yarn project. So last but not least, we are just gonna quickly make a little pom-pom to wrap around our jar. So if you've never made a pom-pom before, I'm honored to be the first person to show you how. Um, what this is, you can buy um, a pom-pom maker at Michael's or um, this is just a homemade one. I would recommend <laughs> buying a real one. I just use some foam core and you wanna get a shape like this. So I'm gonna unravel some of my yarn 
yeah, pom poms have been super trendy lately, and I feel like we just add them to everything, and it kind of immediately makes it a little, look a little bit more upscale, and there was more thought put into it. <laughs> totally. I feel like I've crafted so often lately, and I've been like, eh, I don't really know, and then I add a pom pom, and I'm like, oh my god, that's the cutest thing I've ever made. <laughs> Kind of a tried and true thing, but it, it just keeps looking good. Mm -hmm. All right, that should be good. That's a lot of yarn, you guys. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my yarn at the top here. Actually, let me bring it a little bit more that way. And I'm going to wrap it all the way around. I'm gonna go over, kind of looks like a magnet. I'm gonna go over both of the ends of the magnet. And it's okay if you overlap your yarn. You want to try to go outward so that you don't overlap too much, but it's okay if you do. And the amount of times that you um, wrap your pom-pom, that's how thick it's gonna be. So just be mindful of that. It's also been interesting. We've loved um, adding in yarn to our crafts. You know, obviously mm -hmm. we're a paint company, um, but it does get boring just painting things all the time. So it seems like yarn has been a great um, tool for us. Yeah, absolutely. Just like, a, I feel like textiles are so in um, embroidery and um, knitting is really in that whole granny chic trend. So it's been exciting to find ways to incorporate that um, with painted projects as well. All right, so that's good for me. So I'm gonna snip that. And I'm gonna use this piece. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go take it under here, loop it through. See no way. Cricket said, um, pom poms bring back some awesome summer camp crafts from the 70s. I've seen a ton of those nostalgic crafts making a comeback. Um, and that is absolutely true that um, we've been painting a lot like that recently. We've used a lot of uh, 70s like product trends. That's incredible, Cricket. That's the best thing I've heard all day. Um, yeah, like let me grab some smaller baby scissors. Okay, so I want to sneak my scissors in here and I'm just going to cut at the top there. Switching to these scissors, I need to bring in the heavy duty. Oh, what am I going for? Okay. Awesome. Beautiful pom pom. And you can obviously just go in and trim it a little bit because it's like a kind of reminding me of like, what's that Muppet animal? <laughs> Give it Give a little some animal vibes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you just tie it around your beautiful jar. So cute. Look at that. <laughs> super boho, super cute. And you guys, with that, I think we kind of went over all of the different techniques that I was hoping to teach you today. 
Yeah, so again, if you guys end up making any projects that are inspired by our classes, um, we want to make sure that you hashtag them with make it with Michaels and hashtag plaidcraft so we can see them as well. Um, this link to this um, class that will be recorded, I think Jimena, um, our Michaels rep over here, po posted that in the chat. So if you want to go ahead and navigate to that and get an idea for where these will be posted, um, you can find all of our other classes um, listed on that page as well in the Michaels community classroom. So um, I think if we're all finished up, I think we're going to uh, say goodbye to everybody for today. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, again, my name's Dylan and this is Emma. It's been great to spend a little afternoon with you. All right. Bye, guys. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Bye.